What was happening is Belteshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, was partying it up and he brought the candlestick of the Lord and he brought the vessels of the Lord for, that uh, his grandfather had taken along in the captivity from the destruction of Jerusalem 70 years earlier. He was partying it up and then a hand appeared out of nowhere and wrote uh, on the placer of the wall by the candlestick, Mene shows up twice, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufarsin. And he kind of freaks out, nobody can figure it out. Uh, yeah, no, it's on, the, the audio's on. So he calls in all the Chaldeans to interpret the language and nobody can interpret it until the Queen Mother tells him, go send for Daniel and he will explain it to you. And so we get to verse 24. He had not humbled himself like his grandfather. And because of that, <coughs> Daniel the prophet tells him in verse 24, then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written. And this is the writing that, which was, that was written, many, many, Tekel Ufarsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting on a more personal note there. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. The Lord's very succinct in how he speaks. Then commanded Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain and Darius the Median, or the Mede, took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. So that's what we're gonna look at, the meaning of uh, that sentence that showed up on the wall, if we can glean anything from it. <coughs> so many is easy, it's, he shows up twice, but many tells him that means numbered, Tekel means weight till this day in Arabic. I don't know about Hebrew, but in Arabic that still means weight. Thikl, tekel. And Ufarsin is when you, uh, you know the Pharisees in the Bible? Ferez is to divide. So the Pharisees were separating themselves from others. So that's division. And again, in Semitic languages till this day, that word has that meaning. <coughs> yes, Tiffany. Right, yeah, uh, I, I, have an, I, I have an insight into that, I believe, from the Lord as far as a spiritual lesson into that, but I don't have a grammatical one, let's say. I don't know, but, but you, I'm going to broach, I'm going to talk about that very point soon. And yeah. the other thing is, well, uh, Paris is not, as part, it was not written on the law? Right, it's not Ufarsin, yeah, that's the only one that's changed. Again, I'm going to address that, yeah. Very, very observant of you, we're going to get into that. <laughs> okay, so um, he tells him, you talk about it, but by the way, that's a diet where you want to weigh more. He says, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Wanting is lacking. And the, even in English till this day, we say I want. Really, technically, the word means I lack. But with time, it became, came to mean I wish. So when he tells him you're wanting, it means you're not, you're not heavy enough. The Bible talks about the Lord weighs the spirit. So we're talking about spiritually. That's one of the ways you know how God judges people. He weighs uh, the spirit. I'm not sure exactly how all of that works out in the physical world, but there it is. All right. There's, some, there's a lot of scholars that have tried to work the gematria out. You ever heard the word gematria? Yeah. So if you ever go into like... If you're going to study like prophecy in depth, you're going to come across that. And what it is, is that the Hebrew, the Hebrew letters are assigned numerical values. You can do the same in English. So A would be one because it's the first letter of the alphabet. B would, the numerical value of B would be two. Now that system is actually biblical. And the reason why it's biblical is because the Bible tells you in Revelation 13 that you can calculate the number of the name of the beast. Right? So a lot of people, like uh, the Protestants historically have associated that with uh, uh, a, uh, a title that was briefly on the mitra of the Pope. One of the things he had, not anymore, but he had the uh, Vicarius Filii Dei, Vicar of the Son of God. And that's one of his official titles to this day. He's a substitute for the Son of God, the Pope. And then when you, and of course, if you know, like remember Roman numerals, like the V is five, uh, the X is 10, the C is five. C is 100, D is 500. So when you, go, when you add them all up, you get 666 for Vicar of the Son of God. But somebody who's good with numbers can also do that with your name, believe me. All right? Uh, you'd be surprised how many things can be turned into 666. 
So a lot of Christian sites are out there like, oh, we've got it, look, it's 666, but they don't consider that you can do that with pretty much anything. So always take those, those commentators with a grain of salt. Here's what they do with the, with the gematria on that, the numerical values uh, of that, because there, there is a, an, a connection to them. One way is the Bible talks about the mane. Look at Ezekiel 45.12. Ezekiel 45.12. So this, what I'm giving you now, part of it is interesting to look at. Maybe we can glean something out of it. Part of it is an antidote to some of those sensationalist scholars who change the Bible and make you believe that they found something numerical in the Bible. But if you dig deep enough, they really haven't found anything. They're actually messing around with it to get to the number that they want to get to. I'm tempted to do the same thing, okay? I'm tempted to get a really nice number out of that and tell you that God gave me a great revelation. But to be honest, I haven't found, well, I did, but not, not something big, okay? So here, look at Ezekiel 45, verse 12. Ezekiel 45, 12. There the prophet, who was a contemporary of uh, Daniel, he says, and the shekel shall be 20 giras. All right, now a gira is a weight. It actually literally means grain. So you guys know back then, I know now we, we use cryptocurrency almost, but back then you weigh things, the price for something by weight, like a bag of grain. So giras are, are a bag of grain, if you will, right? So the currency in Israel, ever since the days of Moses, was the shekel. Till this day, the government of Israel, the currency is the shekel. We have the Canadian dollar, they have the shekel, there's the euro. All right, so 20 giras, and then he says this, 20 shekels, 5 and 20 shekels, 15 shekels shall be your mane. So what they do is they take the word mene, and since it means numbered, and they say, well, that's a variation of the word mane. And the mane is, uh, it has a value of uh, different values of shekels and giras. The word tech, so this, they make it mane. I'll write it over it. Uh, maybe I'll write it in red, although it doesn't appear too much the red on the board. Is there a different color here, like yellow or something? Okay, red is the only one, so we'll go with that. So this would be, mene would be um, the mane in your Bible. Tekel is just another way of saying shekel. And ufarsin, since it means divided, Daniel tells us that it means divided, ufarsin. And then, and how many parts is the kingdom divided? Two. Okay, so ufarsin would be half. Presumably, half a many. And since we have the values of the many, of a mani in Ezekiel, then you can get a numerical value for the sentence mene mene uh, tekel ufarsin. <clears throat> now, here's what the scholars usually do. They say that a mani is 50 shekels. Now, I think that's a mistake, but this is what they say. They say that the mani is 50 shekels. Now, if you look in Ezekiel 45, 12, he says that one of the manis, you've got, what is it, what are the options? 12, no, 15, 20, and 60, I think he says. In Ezekiel 45, 12, yeah, 20 shekels, you have a mani of 20 shekels. You have a mani of 25, and you have a mani of 15. So, yeah, so if you add them all up, 20 and 25, 45, and 15, 60. So the mani is 60. Well, the sub so what they do is this. Because they can't come up with their number with 60, they change it to 50. And they change it to 50 because the Septuagint reads 50. And the reason the Septuagint translation reads 50 is because historically there was a mani of 50. But when they get to the Bible, the Ezekiel, and then Ezekiel says that the mani is 60, they're like, that's historically inaccurate. It wasn't 60, it was 50. So let, they literally change the verse to say 50. Even though what Ezekiel is doing, Ezekiel is clearly, if you know the context, in 45, he's prophesying about the millennial kingdom. Ezekiel is saying the money is going to be 60. He's not saying it was. So ignoring the context completely and trying to get at a specific number, here's what they do. They change the 60 to 50. So if we go with the kind of money that's 50, so if you have, um, if you have one many, the number of, of uh, jira, so a money is 50 shekels, and a shekel is 20 jira or gira. So when you multiply them together, don't worry about the math, I'll just put it on the screen, okay? If you multiply them together, what you get is, um, uh, 
the total that you get to is 2,520 giras. This is total number of giras. All right, the reason why that's interesting to them and to us, does that number tell you anything, 2,520? You know what that is? How long is the tribulation? Seven years. Seven years. Okay, that's seven years. So they say, you know, that judgment points uh, towards the seven years of the tribulation and the judgment. The problem is, there is no 50 gira many. There isn't one. So to save you time, you can go check my notes. I have a breakdown in the tables. The only way that I know to give a, a, a value for the money, other than 60, is, uh, is 100. Here's how you can get the value of a money from the Bible. Look in, you're going to need two references. So you're going to need 1 Kings chapter 10 and you're going to need 2 Chronicles chapter 9. So 1 Kings chapter 10 and 2 Chronicles chapter 9. There's some more, there's some sub, you can play with a lot of numbers in there. And I'm not going to, because I don't want to spend too much time playing with the numbers. But I just would like to show you one way that you can historic, you can, you can get the value of a money just from the Bible without going to guys who mess around with history because they want to change what the Bible says. Look what you do. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 17. 1 Kings 10, 17. That's King Solomon. The Bible says, and he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. Now, that word there, pound, is money. That's what the King James translators have done. The King James translators translated money as pound there. So, if you, put, if you just note it down, 300 pound, or 300 many, 300 many went to one shield. Now, compare that to 2 Chronicles 9.16. Second Chronicles 9.16 tells you that 300 shekels of gold went to one shield. 300 shekels went to one shield. This is shield. <laughs> I should write because they both start with SH. This is shekels. 300 shekels went to one shield. Did it say, th it said, th uh, where am I? Three pounds, sorry. Not 300. Okay, so if you do the math then, if, if three money is one shield, and the same passage also tells you that 300 shekels is, is one shield, then you divide 300 by three, and you get that the money is 100. See? From the Bible. Without going to, to the, the guys that correct your Bible. And you thought math was useless. Ha! Look at that. <laughs> okay. So you, from the Bible, you get a value of 100. Now, if you stick a value of 100 shekels, if you, if you, if you make the money 100 shekels, the number I get to is 5,020. You say, what does that mean? I have no idea. It's me. <laughs> I don't know. But this is being honest with what the Bible gives you as information. Now, here's what you can do, though. Okay? Here's what you can do. Here is something that's straightforward and without messing around with what the Bible says is the value of the money, just sticking with the Bible words, look. Check, uh, open up with me. You're in Daniel? Yeah. Okay, look in Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation 12 says the same thing, but you don't have to go to Revelation. Look in Daniel 12, verse 7. When Daniel describes the length of uh, the Great Tribulation, here's how he describes it. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7. There he says, And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, that's the Lord, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So, the Bible word for years many times is times. You know that the Great Tribulation is how long? Three and a half, right? So here he says it's for a time, that's one year, 
and times, that's two years, and a half. And a half a year for a total of three and a half years. Well, that's a setup you have here. That's one and uh, one and one, so you've got times. Tekel is one, and half of one is one half. That's two times. And that's one time. And that's half a time for three and a half years. So is there a connection? And, and that's a judgment, of course. Is there a connection to the Great Tribulation? Maybe. But this is as honest a work as I know to do with, the, with that stuff, if you want to go into numerical values. The only other way you get something more interesting is if you start messing around in your Bible. And that is something, that's a good lesson. If you get anything out of this, you get this, that there's a temptation to mess around with the wording of the Bible so you can get this n nice number you want, so you can write your book and sell it, or you can make your video and get the clicks. Okay. There's probably something there, just I haven't studied enough, and maybe somebody has, but I don't know anybody that has. But I'm not going to start changing the value of the biblically defined terms just so I can have some cool number to give to you. This is cool enough as far as I'm concerned. 